see a lot of young voters in your district. What are some important issues you think are facing those voters? The climate change. Uh, it, it's the, the time to do something about this is past. <laughs> the time is, it must be now to do something. Um, there's absolutely a federal role there, and, and we'll, we'll see what happens from Washington. But, but meanwhile, there are absolutely things that Virginia can do to address this issue. Um, Low-hanging fruit, there's something called the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, REGI, which Virginia was basically a millimeter away from passing this past year, and then through basically um, uh, procedural moves that that was voted down, or not, or essentially cut from the budget and approval. Um, it's, it's a carbon cap and carbon trade uh, program that nine or 10 states participate in right now. It's not gonna solve climate change, but at least it's a step in the right direction. And I'd say the same thing on, on clean energy. We are, we are, we're taking some steps, but we need to be taking leaps right now to do that. There, there's an industry, already a clean industry, clean energy industry in Virginia it has 100,000 uh, people working in it. There are another 100,000 jobs waiting to be filled if we expand that, that industry the way it should be. You mentioned the issue of climate change. How would you like to tackle that if you were to be elected? I think, well, again, pa passing Reggie, which it, it, getting that the state in there, again, it, it's just an entry level thing, but it, it will, it's a step in the right direction. I think we could do a lot more, um, for example, right now with the, uh, the they call it net metering, there's, there's a cap on how much power uh, non-utilities can provide into the grid, into the system right now. And it, it really begs the question, why does Virginia have one of the lowest caps in the country when there's no question that people want to use solar? Uh, wind is a little harder for an individual to implement, but it still can be done through private industry or public-private partnerships. Why wouldn't we be leveraging more of that opportunity? And, and actually, it, not just not, not just uh, saying it's okay, but in some cases, why don't it have incentives to uh, to um, push people that in that direction? So I think I think those steps are absolutely critical. I saw on your website that you prioritize the issue of uh, gun safety. If you'd be elected, how would you like to uh, create some legislation that would help solve that problem? You know, we're we're doing this interview today um, in the in the same restaurant where I was sitting uh, during the when the Virginia Tech tragedy occurred. I can remember watching the television here as the news feeds were coming in of that terrible tragedy, um, which was was uh, more than a decade and a half ago, and and we still sit here today in Virginia without adequate uh, gun safety measures. And I really uh, thought that this past uh, legislative session we would get something done on that. It, it, it's clear if you look at public opinion polls, this is, it, there are some splits on certain gun measures that, that you, you'll get differences in Republicans and Democrats. But when you talk about just common sense things, you know, expanding universal background checks or limiting magazine sizes, there, there is clear bipartisan support for that. So we had a special session in Virginia uh, this past July. Uh, the governor brought the whole legislature to town. Um, the legislature met for 90 minutes and took no vote, and then adjourned. And nothing happened. No, no action was taken on uh, any of these common sense measures where there was you know, common bipartisan support. So I fault the leadership for that. And in this case, the leadership of the House of Delegates, uh, which could have allowed the vote and didn't. They said, no, we need to do more study. Well, you know, we've been studying this since Virginia Tech, and, and probably before then, but certainly since Virginia Tech. We still don't have adequate measures on the books. So I think it's time for universal background checks um, doing something about the magazine size is limiting that, and, the, and then a, a red flag law with, with due process provided, but uh, keeping guns out of people's hands that, that shouldn't have them. Uh, young voters in Virginia vote at a higher rate than most other states. What are some ways that you are trying to encourage them to come to the polls in an off year? You know, we, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, I've, I've learned during this campaign, it, it is not an effort of one, it's not an effort of dozens, it's an effort of many, many people. And, and one of the largest groups of, of volunteers I have are young people, uh, particularly from high school and college. Uh, colleges in the area, we've got uh, uh, young Democrats uh, through um, the local high schools, which are, if not every day, certainly every weekend, uh, canvassing, as we said, hitting the doors and, not, and, and talking to voters about uh, my campaign as well as the other candidates in this area. Um, college students from the area, but even outside the area. We've had college students coming, literally driving down from different areas, you know, multi-hour drives to come to Richmond to, um, to help with the campaign. And I, in terms of getting other people to vote, other young people to vote, uh, there's nothing like one young person talking to another young person and saying, hey, this is really super important. And, and it is, I mean, everybody says every election is the most important, but I think this one, when we talk about the leadership 
of, of, the, of the House and the Senate both being up for grabs, yeah, that's a super important election because whoever controls this legislature also will be leading us into a redistricting process, which is a 10-year impact. Uh, this will happen in, in, in 2021. Um, when you share a message like that, uh, a young person shares that with another young person, I, I think that resonates. I think that's going to get more and more people to understand, yep, a better vote <laughs> this year, it really does matter. If you do get these voters to come out to you on election day, what is one thing you want them to remember about you? You know, I think uh, one thing I'm trying to bring to the table is, uh, yeah, obviously integrity, but also um, a collaborative attitude. I, I work for a company that do, does technology consulting, but one of our values is collaboration, collaboration with our, our team internally, but then also collaboration with clients and, um, and even other companies in cases where we have projects that, that involve uh, more, than one, uh, more than one company supporting them. So I'd, I'd want them to know that I'm, I'm not coming in with an us-they attitude. I'm not going to close the door. I mean, just, just because I disagree with uh, our public utility on some of their environmental positions, I'm still going to talk to them about how we can have a better clean energy economy in Virginia. Because, yeah, they, they're, they are <laughs> the, the, the major utility for the state. And if you shut the door, how are we going to accomplish anything? Um, whether it's gun safety, um, uh, funding for schools. I mean, I, I know there is bipartisan interest in, for example, increasing uh, teacher salaries. I know there is bipartisan interest in doing more for early childhood education. We just got to talk about it and get a vote. And I think we, we make the leadership change, which, which would enable us to have the vote. But then to get to that vote, yes, you need bipartisan uh, support. So I, I would say um, an open door and a collaborative attitude. Is there anything else you'd like to add? You know, I, I'd go back to um, the importance of um, this election, and, and you know, everyone says every year, "No, this is the most important election we've ever had." But, but I really think this one is it because so much is at stake. Um, when, when people and I talk to a ton of voters and doing and doing like young, young and old, um, and, and they really are saying the same things. I mean, go back to gun safety. I mean, that issue. Yes, we had the, the tragedy most recently in Virginia Beach. Um, that is not faded from people's minds uh, because it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cumulative effect of people saying, yeah, there's Virginia Beach, but there are other tragedies in other states, other tragedies in Virginia, and we still are no better off right now. And I think um, every day I hear that from people. It's not, it's, it is still top of mind. It's not going away. And so we've got to keep that front of mind. And again, if I'm elected, it's going to be front of mind. We're going to do something about this. But I, I really think um, that there's a mandate from, from the, uh, the public that to, do, to do better, and I hope I can be part of that.